Hey, what's going on, folks? Matthew Weiss here, Weiss-Sound.com, and Weiss Advice here on YouTube. Got my dryer running in the background, so don't pay that any mind. Okay, we are going to be talking about mastering. Now, to start this off, I am not a mastering engineer. At least, I don't think of myself that way. I don't typically book myself that way. But from time to time, I do end up getting hired to master projects. And in all fairness, I do have a fair amount of mastering experience under my belt. The thing is, is that there are people who have dedicated years and years specifically to mastering and have set up their rooms and spaces specifically to mastering. And those are really the real guys. But if you're a mix engineer for any degree of time, you're going to find yourself being responsible for producing the final master for records, sometimes ones that you've mixed, sometimes ones that you didn't. So this is one of those cases. I've been hired to master the instrumentals from a whole bunch of albums, like seven albums. There's budget constraints, there's time restraints, and so I need to set this up and do it efficiently. And I'm going to walk you through this little process here. So first of all, for efficiency's sake, I really do want to keep things as in the box as possible. Once recalls start happening over across seven albums, it's going to get pretty crazy if I have to keep rerunning stuff through hardware. So if I can, I'm going to try and get away with doing it all in the box. Uh, might not work out that way, but hopefully it will. So first of all, I'm set up here in Pro Tools, which should be a dead giveaway that I'm not really a mastering engineer because this is not a great program for mastering specifically, but it gets the job done. I've set up all of the tracks here, and they're all going down to a bus. And I'm going to create my general processing, like overall tone curves, overall compression curves, on this bus. And then I'm going to compare it to the next track and sequence, and I'm going to see if they work together through that same chain. And I might tweak between the two to get something that approximately works for both, check it in a couple other records, maybe make one or two more tweaks, and then have a basic processing that's just kind of set up across the board. Now, from there, I'm going to go into each individual track and I'm going to process that track on its own. So that's going to allow me to kind of cater each track to the chain that I have set up. All right, let's get into this. I'm going to start by, believe it or not, putting on headphones. And these are Slate VSX headphones specifically, and I'll explain why I'm using those in a moment. But let's take a listen to this record. So in general, I would say that this sounds pretty good. I don't think it's going to be a real struggle to get this to sound really great. Cool. Wonderful start. Now, what what I think of as the mastering process is really just ensuring <clears throat> the best translation across the board. And that's why I like these headphones specifically, because it allows me to model different spaces. So I can start checking things in an artificial club space, an artificial car, and all of those things might reveal small details. Once my record sounds really good in all of those spaces, then I know that I have something that's going to translate. So once I throw this on, if you're not using these headphones, this is gonna sound really weird to you. You're going to get just the convolution output that is meant to work with these headphones. So I don't think that throwing on a set of regular headphones will give you exactly the right idea as to what I'm doing, but if you have regular headphones, it might be worth just checking out. You'll get at least a better sense of what's going on. If you're listening on speakers, you're gonna be like, this is weird. All right, let's give it a listen. So I, I like to start with the club emulation, especially for hip hop, and the reason is because it gives me a sense of how the sound is going to react to a very roomy space. And here the sound is still feeling like it's pretty tight. I feel like everything's very clear and that the wash of being in a big room is not really disrupting things. I also want to listen for the bass because if the bass doesn't feel just a little bit heavy in the club setting, it's probably too light. And I have that exact thing going on here. So I'm going to pull up an EQ and I'm going to give it a little bit more bass and probably a little bit more low mid as well. It feels like there's a little bit of scoop. I kind of noticed this just on the original playback, but with the club, it really becomes exacerbated. There's just a little bit of scoop in the low mid. So I'm going to start by going up to maybe like 50 hertz 
and just pushing some bass. And I feel like I can get away with a pretty big hefty push here and it still doesn't feel like it's too overwhelming of bass. I also don't feel like I'm catching the entirety of the kick and the entirety of the low end, so I'm gonna move the corner up to 70 hertz and try that. Great, so now I feel like I've gone just a little too far, so I'm gonna back things off and I'm gonna find a point where that sub feels like it's really hitting, but it doesn't feel like it's getting muddy and weird. Yeah, that feels pretty good to me. I'm also going to give it a little bit of low mid. I'm gonna try 400 hertz as a starting place. Might be 300, might be 500, but I feel like 400 is a good starting place here. I'm gonna give it just a hair of push there as well. My guess is I'm probably gonna find that across these records, I'm going to have the same lack of bass and the same uh, lack of low mid. Uh, this I feel like I'm not gonna need as much though. And again, you can hear that I can crank this knob all the way up and it still does not really feel particularly muddy. Like it's starting to get muddy and we're also in the club setting which does scoop out the low mid a little bit. So this is gonna be too far, but it's just to point out like that low mid has been scooped. Knowing the club setting, it should feel a little scooped, it just shouldn't feel dramatically scooped. So this still feels like it's a little scooped in the low mids, but it feels like it's that right amount. Before. After. Now, I, I'm going to jump over to a different convolution, and I'm going to make sure that I haven't overwhelmed the bass in some of these other settings. So I might go over to, like, the SUV, the car. If I have this big, uncontrolled low end, which is what a car will produce, if it's really, like, rumbly and out of control, then I've gone too far with the bass. Not at all, right? If anything, it feels like it could possibly use maybe a hair more. Let's try the electric car. Same deal. Yeah, actually all of these are telling me that maybe a hair more bass, believe it or not, might be the way to go. So I'm gonna turn it up, up just a little, little bit and uh, go from there. Now, the real sauce is when I check it on a different track. So if I jump over to this next record. So here I feel like the proportion of bass is right, but it feels like there's just a hair of fogginess that is in the record. So this is one of those cases where I would jump onto the individual track and I would pull up an EQ and I'm just going to work out that sort of narrow thing that's happening, making things a little flubby in the low end. That sounds great. So basically I'm going to continue to repeat this process and then eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to bypass the headphone system completely and I'm going to come out over to my main speakers and I'm going to do all of the final work on my speakers.
So here, the, the very deep subs on this track, on my main speakers, I just know don't have quite enough in them, but I think that's individual to the track. So I'm gonna push up a little energy down in like the 55 hertz area. And basically I'm gonna continue this process through the whole album, but you can see even while explaining things, things move pretty fast. So this is a really good, quick, efficient way to get it done. All right guys, if you dig what I'm doing here on this channel, hit that like button. If you wanna get more of these videos sent to your notifier, hit the notifi hit subscribe with the notifications. Yeah, that part. And then of course, you know what we say, we are musicians, sound is our instrument. I will catch you next time.